We got a piece of shit escape convict, a piece of shit cop, and a sneaky little piece of shit monstro punk. And where am I likely to find these marks now? And if anything were to happen to me, who'd look after Hachi? Everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> Feel it, okay? You seem to make the best of things. I don't know what Hiroshi told you back then, but I took out all the top guys in Monstro. Listen, he abandoned you and the girl. You! Hey guys, welcome to the 17th episode of Takisoba with a review for Michiko and Hanshin. I'm Anime Master Malesh, with my anime apprentice, Nate. If you're an anime fan that enjoys mature, episodic anime like Cabo Bebop and Samurai Champloo, then Michiko and Hanshin is the next show for you. I completely agree, and I actually think this anime is more similar to Samurai Champloo than even Cowboy Bebop is. It's a very adult anime, with action in every episode, with a great story and a unique setting. Michiko and Hanshin debuted in the fall season in 2008 with 22 vibrant episodes that explored the connections you can make with others. The first connection you see is between our two main characters, Michiko, a fugitive on the run, and Hanshin, an orphan girl that lives with an abusive foster family. Michiko decides to take Hanshin away from her foster family due to Hachin being the daughter of Michio's former lover, Hiroshi. From there, each episode is a crazy adventure, with each episode following this dysfunctional couple as they try to find Hiroshi. One interesting thing about this anime is that it takes place in a fictional country based heavily on Brazil. The characters having Japanese names is based on the fact that many Japanese citizens have emigrated to Brazil in the past. Like we said earlier, this anime is very mature, and you'll see a lot of hard stuff like child abuse, tons of murder, sexual references, and more. It's not over the top, and it's great for any older viewers who are looking for an anime that doesn't take place in high school. The reason I consider this anime similar to Samurai Champloo is that it has a similar style of plot and character interaction. It's largely episodic, and the primary arc of finding one man is spread out thin, and the show isn't afraid to break up main characters or solo episodes, which I liked. I also enjoyed the gang warfare, which connected a lot of characters together and made things really interesting towards the end. Now I'll talk about those characters. Michiko is one of the two titular characters, a convicted criminal who escaped from prison and kidnapped Hachin to help them both find Hiroshi, Hachin's father. Hachin was heavily abused by her foster family, and thus she was very quick to accept her fate as Michiko's hostage, and from that point on, their relationship rose. Despite Hachin's upbringing, she remains polite and caring, and acts as a buffer for Michiko's extreme brashness and aggression. Michiko is quick to resort to violence, but Hachin remains passive, and they clash when Hachin feels that Michiko is leading her down the wrong path. They run into a lot of criminal groups and gangs, sometimes getting into really deep trouble, but sometimes being right where they need to be in order to gain information on Hiroshi. As you'll see with most of the other characters, Hiroshi plays an important part of connecting them to Michiko and Hachin. This does a great job of building up the suspense for the eventual meetup with Hiroshi. Even the primary antagonist is involved with Hiroshi. He is Satoshi, the leader of the monster gang. Satoshi holds Hiroshi in high regard for being a second in command before he left him. Ultimately, I really did love the build up for Hiroshi's character. It's not something you often see in anime, with one elusive character evading everyone else. But Hiroshi still manages to immensely impact Michiko and Hashin's lives. Overall, the characters in this anime were an interesting bunch with unique connections to Hiroshi and Michiko, and it even impacts the way Michiko and Hachin's relationship develops. My only complaint would be the wishy-washy relationship that Michiko and Hachin have. I'd often felt that Hachin was just being too annoyingly mad at Michiko for no reason. It does get better over time, but it took a little bit long for me. Manglo was behind Michiko and Hachin, and if you may recall, they also did Samurai Champloo, which made them the perfect studio to do this type of show. They gave Michiko and Hachin an eccentric art style that did remind me of Samurai Champloo. Along with the great art style, they went hard when it came to the animation, with great action and chasings throughout the show. It really surprised me when I learned that the show came out in 2008, because the animation holds up so well, especially compared to other shows that came out the same year. While Manglo may not be around anymore, they'll always have a special place in my heart for these types of shows. The art style of this show was one of the better ones I've seen, and it also reminded me early on of Samurai Champloo. It's still got a distinct art style, with clear inspiration from Brazil and South America. The animation was quite good, and there were a few trippy episodes where the animators got to pull out all the stops. It was a bold direction that paid off. 
the soundtrack of this anime was equally as bold. It had mixes of samba and jazz, and was composed by an authentic Brazilian known as Alexandre Cassin. It was excellent background music, and fit in with the action in a way that reminded me again of Cowboy Bebop. The opening theme was amazing, but I was inexplicably disinterested with the ending theme. I absolutely love the soundtrack for the show, as it incorporates a lot of jazz, which makes sense as Shinichiro Watanabe produced it, and he is known for directing Cowboy Bebop, which is filled with jazz. Michiko and Hachin's opening is very reminiscent of Tank from Cowboy Bebop, which is one of my favorite anime openings of all time, so of course, I really also enjoyed Michiko and Hachin's. I also really love the ending theme, and it might actually be my favorite ending theme from any anime. Moving on to voice acting, I switched between the dub and the sub versions of the show. They both are great, but I would recommend the dub version since it incorporates a lot of accents that makes you feel like you're actually in Brazil. Of course, I watched the dub as well, and I will make the rare suggestion to otakus to watch the dub version instead of the subtitles. While the dub had a couple awkward voice actors with a few flat lines, the primary cast was very talented. As Malesh said, the English voice actors are able to get closer to the various accents from Brazil and other South American countries. I must say that early on, I found myself a little disinterested with how the plot was delivered and unsure of the direction that it would go in. After sticking with it, I'd say it picked up well and tied more things together than gave me the rising action that I craved. By the final episodes, I was watching them one after another, dying to see the epic conclusion. I like this anime for much of the same reasons as I liked Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champloo, both of which I hold in very high regard. If you have seen either of those shows, this anime is a must watch. Aside from that, this anime is also a very strong recommendation for me for any first time anime, especially for adults who may have preconceived notions about anime being too full of Japanese schoolgirls. While I don't think Michiko and Hajin are better than Bebop or Champloo, I would say that it has a lot of flair that made those shows great, plus as a rich Latino setting that you often don't see in anime. I would recommend to anyone that wants to see a mature, episodic anime, or to anyone that wants to see an anime in a vibrant setting like Brazil. You can watch Michiko and Hajin for free, dubbed or subbed, on Funimation's website. There's also a Blu-ray and DVD collection. As always, if you've already watched Michiko and Hajin, click the first link in the description for our post-view discussion, which includes spoilers. Thanks for watching our review of Michiko and Hachin. Please give it a like or comment feedback. We'll see you guys next time with a review of the film, The Place Promised in Our Early Days. Ciao.